uh, last time I was there, the lady called me Porky, so we'll see. <laughs> The context was I had ordered a beer and then I finished it and then she, from across the room, was like, hey, Porky, you want another beer? And um, I was like, what? For your safety, please remain seated, supervise children, and refrain from smoking in the cabin. Thank you. Disney's Hollywood Studios has changed so much since our first trip there in 2013. Obviously, there's no backlot tour anymore, but they did add Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story Land, which in my opinion are very welcome additions. The first place we went when we got there was Rise of the Resistance. They no longer have a virtual queue for that, which is good in some ways, but bad in others. The good thing is that a few months ago when you did need a boarding group to ride the ride, if you were able to snag yourself one, you were basically guaranteed a ride on the ride, and you didn't have to wait too long in line when your boarding group was called. But of course, if you didn't get a boarding group, then you were just SOL on being able to ride the ride, so at least now you are able to wait in line if you want to. Because I know some people would come from all the way across the country, or even other parts parts of the world to ride Rise of the Resistance, only to not be able to get a boarding group. The bad part is that when we got there, before the park actually officially opened, there was already almost a two-hour wait, but we discussed it and decided it was worth it, because while Carlos and I had done it before, the rest of the family had not. And while we definitely like Star Wars, there were people in our group who were absolutely diehard fans, and if you've never ridden Rise of the Resistance, it's a full-on experience, and I'd say it's the best ride at Hollywood Studios, and maybe even at the entire Florida resort. The Rise of the Resistance line weaved us in and out of places that I didn't even know existed, but one of the places that it took us through was part of the queue for Muppet Vision 3D. Muppet Vision 3D was running, but they had this part of the queue blocked off, but it allowed me to get some pretty cool photos of the different posters and signs and jokes and stuff that they have set up around the Muppet Vision 3D ride, and I particularly like the movie posters where they have like the Muppet versions of famous movies or famous rides or whatever, but one thing I will say about the Rise of the Resistance line and some of the lines in general right now at Walt Disney World is I'm not too much of a fan of them taking us out of the land that the ride is in. So it's a little immersion breaking to start in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which is obviously where the ride is located, and end up in different backstage areas or even over by the Muppets ride or whatever the case. I know they need to be able to pack in a lot of people in such a way that it's not obstructing the rest of the pathways and what have you. But at one point we were in some backstage area and we could see the backsides of certain buildings and stuff and it's a little hard to stay immersed in the story, especially in the case of Star Wars, but obviously two hours worth of queue is a lot of people. You'll see that a good portion of this video is the queue for Rise of the Resistance and just in general us being in Star Wars land, because honestly that took up probably half of the day. Which sounds kind of crazy, but outside of that and Toy Story Land, there's really not that much more. I remember when we were at Hollywood Studios back in 2013, it was very much a half day experience. So I'm definitely glad that they've added so much to the park since then. And even with Star Wars taking up so much of our time, we did get to do basically everything we wanted to do in this park. But I do think that this park was probably the favorite of the adult males in our group and in general especially compared to Magic Kingdom and even Animal Kingdom Hollywood Studios is a little bit more mature even though there's definitely tons for kids to do as well BB-8 is everyone assembled? Good. Should we be inside prep? Recruits, thank you for joining the calls. I think Disney pretty much invented the idea of having a pre-show, but one thing I will say about Rise of the Resistance is their pre-show is very much part of the ride. And so the total experience lasts a good 15 or 20 minutes, so it definitely feels worth it compared to some rides where you wait in line for a long time and then have a really short ride experience. But after Galaxy's Edge, we split up because Carlos, his mom, and I had a lunch reservation. We had a little bit of time before, so we grabbed a drink and decided to stop and record for you all. Well, hello, friends. Um, I'm here with Carlos and Carlos' mom. <laughs> Hi. Uh, and we're just hanging out at Hollywood Studios today. Um, I think this is the first actual live clip, clip we've recorded, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Uh, we've just been, we got in real late last night. We've been trying to adjust and whatever. And we're, oh, sorry, there's salt on my face. So we have a margarita. Um, <laughs> we've had to link up with family and all that stuff. But um, yeah, so we're just hanging out at Hollywood Studios. How's it going so far, Carlos? Lots of fun. Super humid. <laughs> Yeah, it's hot. Yeah. It's hot. 
and um and yeah so update number one for you all we're about to go have some lunch we have a lunch reservation at the 50s primetime cafe mm. uh, last time i was there the lady called me porky so we'll see <laughs> the context was i had ordered a beer and then i finished it and then she from across the room was like hey porky you want another beer and um i was like what but if you don't know it's kind of like your that the concept of that is you're like in mom's kitchen so you gotta like not put your elbows on the table and they'll call you out if you're not like you know doing something that would be socially unacceptable in the 50s more or less and so yeah apparently calling uh, me porky was part of the experience that's funny um <laughs> which is a little bit mean but oh well good good story to tell right so yeah we're gonna go do that and um we'll talk soon cheers cheers Pretty much immediately after we stopped rolling for the vlog update, Goofy came up and I screamed like a little kid because Goofy is my favorite of the Fab Five. And we interacted with him a little bit. And I actually think of all of the parks this week, Hollywood Studios had the most cavalcades and character interactions, even more than Magic Kingdom, I think, for us, which is probably more because of how we time things than anything, but it was interesting. Finally, it was time to eat. And I know some people really dislike the food here. I like it. It's kind of like Southern comfort food and whatever. It's pretty commercial, to be fair. You know, I mean, it's not like big, bold flavors that you're going to write home about. But Carlos really, really loves the fried chicken from here, so he was excited we were able to get a reservation, which honestly isn't always easy to do. And as we were leaving, we saw Goofy outside again, or still, I'm not sure if he ever left. But we were in the restaurant for over an hour, so I doubt that he stayed out there the whole time, although I've convinced myself that he waited for us so that he could say goodbye. You may have a different opinion of that, but that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And then as we were walking back to meet up with the rest of the family, out came a cavalcade, so at this point we were definitely feeling the Disney vibe. After we met back up with the family, they wanted to go back into Galaxy's Edge to look in the shops and explore the rest of the area. I introduced them to Blue Milk, which they didn't really like, and I can't say I blame them. If you're going to do Blue Milk, I definitely recommend getting it spiked. The blue one in general is better than the green one, and the blue one comes with rum, the green one comes with tequila. But while the blue and green milk are definitely something I think you should try once, with and without alcohol, it's not something I would ever order outside of Galaxy's Edge. And just be prepared that it's not really going to taste like anything else you've ever had before. The blue one's a little bit floral tasting, and the green one's a little bit more citrusy. And then after shopping and blue milk, we decided to do Smuggler's Run. This ride is nowhere near as good as Rise of the Resistance. However, it's a really cool ride that I think is really interactive. And I love the fact that everyone gets assigned a different job. I've ridden Smuggler's Run quite a few times, both at Disney World and Disneyland in California. But for the first time ever, I actually got to go as a pilot. And I have to say that is by far the best job to have. But it was quite a bit harder than I was expecting. But anyway, Galaxy's Edge is always a lot of fun, even though I will say this was probably the most crowded area of any of the parks the entire week. After we finished up in Galaxy's Edge, we made our way over into Toy Story Land. This, of course, was my nephew Dexter's favorite area. They all wanted to ride the Buzz Lightyear spin ride, but for me, I was afraid it would make me sick. But that allowed me to get some good footage of Carlos and his mom and his sister and her husband on the ride. Even though after looking at it up close, I do think I would have been fine with it. I didn't realize that the car switched from the different circular plates. So it's more like you're going in a figure eight configuration. And so it's more whippy than spinny. <laughs> After that, we all got back together and decided to walk through Toy Story Land a little bit. And that, of course, led us to Slinky Dog Dash, the one and only e-ticket attraction in this area. 
One thing that I think is interesting is Toy Story Midway Mania was there before Toy Story Land, and you used to access it from the other side of the show building. But when they built the new land, they created an entrance obviously on the Toy Story Land side. And honestly, they did such a good job of making it fit into the land like it was designed that way originally on purpose. We didn't actually do Toy Story Mania on this trip, but I will say that it's a really fun ride. I just wouldn't wait for it for longer than like 20 minutes or so. But Slinky Dog Dash is worth up to at least an hour. I'm curious what the ride times look like now that Genie Plus has rolled out, because the standby queue for Slinky Dog Dash is usually pretty long. That and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and of course now Rise of the Resistance are the three big lines you'll wait in. Sometimes Rock and Roller Coaster can get pretty long, and Tower of Terror as well. Speaking of Tower of Terror, after we were done in Toy Story Land, we went and had some food on Sunset Boulevard, and then the last ride of the night was Tower of Terror. That's a personal favorite of mine. It is a drop tower ride, so if you're not a fan of that kind of like drop feeling in your stomach, it's maybe not for you. But I will say the story and kind of concept of it makes it seem like so much more than that type of ride. And I've ridden the Guardians of the Galaxy version at Disney's California Adventure. And while the ride experience on that is a really unique twist on this type of ride and this type of technology, the Twilight Zone old falling apart hotel theming is so much better in my opinion. So I hope they don't mess with this Tower of Terror in the future. Well, hi there, friends. We are done with day one. We were at Hollywood Studios earlier. Um, it was it was good. We had a lot of fun. I mean, lots and lots of people, definitely. Um, but it's nice to see, like, entertainment and shows and um, just the overall vibe of, you know, busyness is back at Walt Disney World. Um but we're going to call it a night. We, um, we just got back from the pool bar. We got these awesome glow drinks. And yeah, time for some Z's. We will, well, I will, someone will uh, talk to you in the morning. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Thank you all so much for watching, and especially if you're still here this late in the video, I just want to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, share, all of those things. Stay tuned for part three that'll be coming out in the next day or two, and you all have a good night.